the story told by social justice activist Brian Stevenson. He says, we've been doing this thing where we have people go to lynching sites and we have them collect soil from the lynching site and put it in a jar. And in our museum, we have hundreds of these jars of soil that were collected from lynching sites. And we have the name of the lynching victim and have the date of the lynching. And it's been really powerful to give people an opportunity to do something tangible, to do something redemptive, to do something restorative. And people come and they go to these places, we give them a memo, and it's really powerful. We had a middle-aged black woman come to one of our events, and she was nervous about going to the lynching site by herself, but she was fired up, and we gave her the jar, and we gave her the memo, and she went out to this lynching site, pretty remote area. She got really nervous, but she decided to do it. So she went to the place where the lynching took place. She was about to start digging when a truck drove by, and there was this white man in the truck who slowed down and stared at her. And then she said the truck stopped and turned around and drove back. And the man stared at her some more. And then it stopped. And then this big white guy got out and started walking towards her. And she was very nervous. Now we tell people, you don't have to explain what you're doing. If you want to say you're just getting dirt for your garden, feel free to say that. And that's what she intended to do. But when this white man walked up to her and he said, what are you doing? She said something got hold of me. And I turned to that man and I said, I'm digging soil because this is where a black man was lynched in 1931 and I'm going to honor his life. And then the man stood there and said, does that paper talk about the lynching? And she said, yes. And he said, can I read it? She gave the man the paper and he stood there reading while she was digging. And then he put the paper down and stunned her by asking, would it be okay if I helped you? And then she told me that this white man got on his knees and he started throwing his hands into the soil with such force. And his hands were getting coated with black soil and they were turning black and he was putting them in the jar. He kept throwing his hands and it moved her. And she said the next thing she knew, she had tears running down her face. And he stopped and said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm upsetting you. And she said, no, 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 you're blessing me and they kept putting soil in the jar. And they got the jar almost full. And she noticed toward the end that the man was slowing down and his shoulders were shaking. And she turned and she looked. And she saw the man had tears running down his face and she stopped. And she put her hand on this man's shoulder and she said, are you all right? And that's when the man said to her, no, I'm just so worried that it might have been my grandparents that were involved in lynching this man. And she said they both sat there with tears running down their face. At the end of it, he stood up and said, I want to take a picture of you holding the jar. And she said, I want to take a picture of you holding the jar. And they both took pictures. And she brought this man back and they put that jar on our exhibit together. Now, Beautiful things like that don't always happen when you tell the truth about history, when you try to actually look for redemption and restoration, when you have every reason to be afraid and angry. But until we commit to some acts like that, until we tell the truth, we deny ourselves the beauty of redemption, the beauty of restoration.